Now, before we get started, um, all of you guys that are attending right now, what I'm gonna encourage you to do is get out your phones right now and go to your app store and download the Periscope app if you haven't downloaded it yet. And uh, I want you to follow, go follow myself and Dr. Kerry Sigafus. You can find us at Chris W. Burfield and Sig Talks at Sig Talks. So go follow us and um, I'll make sure to follow you back. And we're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to show you guys exactly how to use this media to, to grow your business. It's pretty cool. All right. All right, Dr. Kerry, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm about an hour past my normal bedtime, so I'm, I, I, I took a nap, so I'd be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, bushy-faced. Nice. Cool. So we got lots of people right. coming in here. Oh, sweet. And uh, how is the uh, – oh, yeah, look at all those people giving a shout out. Doing amazing because of Carrie. Yeah, that's – yeah, I know. Dr. Carrie is amazing, isn't he, Isaac? <laughs> Hey, Derry, Pennsylvania, James, like that's actually near Blairsville. Is that the same, um, James, if you're still out there right now, is that, uh, is that the same Derry that's near Blairsville? Actually, the first chiropractic office I worked in was in Blairsville, Pennsylvania at Chestnut Ridge Chiropractic. I'm assuming that's the same Derry. Got lots of people from uh, Pennsylvania tonight. Dang. All right, cool. Well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. So, you know, first of all, thanks for being here tonight, guys. Um, this is actually really exciting. I mean, I've been playing with this app now for about a week and a half, and uh, I introduced uh, Dr. Carey to it. Uh, I posted about it on Facebook. He and I are great friends. And uh, he was like, so he messaged me. He's like, tell me more about this Periscope. And I was like, Dude, it's like awesome. You can like live broadcast yourself and there are millions of people using it all over the globe right now and like you don't even really have to market yourself because you can just start broadcasting and people will just find you and tune in. So he jumped on it and started. He, he actually did his, his broadcast before I did. Like I got it downloaded. I was simply a watcher and like for what Periscope is, is it like I said, it gives you the ability to live broadcast, just like you know, just like we're watching this webinar li webinar live right now. You can broadcast through this app all over the world instantly. And um, what's kind of weird, it's kind of weird, but kind of neat at the same time that you can like when you open up your Periscope app um, for the Apple users and and also for you uh, for you Droid people. I've noticed that the Droid is set up a little bit differently than the Apple. Um, the Apple version of it, but there's like a little globe and if you click on that little globe, it opens up a map and then inside that map, there's a bunch of red dots everywhere and those are people that are actually periscoping like live at that moment and if you, you can actually zoom in and you can zoom in sh like right down onto a, like onto a street if you want to, um, but you can actually click on those little red dots and it'll open up the app. Uh, open up the camera on that person that's live streaming and you can see what they're doing at that exact moment in time. So when I first started playing with it, I was actually just more of a, more of a voyeur, if you will. <laughs> and uh, I, was, I was just watching people and I was seeing people inside their living rooms. I was seeing people hanging out in a bar. I saw some people driving around in a car and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is like really, this is fascinating. Like I can just sit here and watch these people live like wherever they are and so like I kind of became addicted to it for for a few days and I would just surf around and my wife would be like what are you doing on that periscope again and I'm like I can't stop it's just so interesting um, so but I hadn't actually broadcast anything so I told Dr. Carey about it and uh, Dr. Carey did his broadcast before I did mine Dr. Carey would you tell everybody exactly how you jumped into doing it, what you did, and what kind of results you saw with it? Well, I, 
I, I got past a lot of my nervousness about talking to people. Well, not even really talking to people, talking uh, with the, the, the SIG Talks podcast that I created. Uh, and I remember when I first started doing the, the podcast, and I'm sitting here with a microphone in, in my little studio, and I was terrified to talk. And I just realized that it was just me. So I, when, I, when it came to the Periscope and you told me about it, I just sort of picked it up one day, and it was, it was 5 o'clock in the morning, and I'm at the gym <laughs> on the treadmill. And so I just thought I'd, I'd do what you did, and I was a voy just a voyeur at first. And I ended up going to a, a, a dance party in Moscow for about a good 20, 30 minutes <laughs> to these guys from Russia. Uh, and they're asking me all of these kinds of questions about Baltimore and where I'm from and who I am and what I do. And, and then I left Russia and I went to Bulgaria for a bit, to Sofia, Bulgaria, where I, I was at, at another house party. But then I rode along with them in the car all the way to a, 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 a Bulgarian nightclub. And I was like, well, you know what? If, if these guys can do it, then there's no reason I, I, I can't do it. So I'm on the treadmill at about mile two, and I, I logged on, and I just did a, a show, and I said, you know, ask the chiropractor is what I did. And, I, and that's all. Just ask the chiropractor. And I logged on, and within a few seconds, there was about 20 or 30 people on there. And they were, you know, asking me where I am, what I'm doing. And my head's bobbing up and down like this because I'm on the treadmill walking. So the camera's nice and stable, and I'm just, you know, walking on the treadmill. And I'm answering people, and then I was like, you know what? Well, I, this was asked the chiropractor, so I just jumped right in and said, okay, well, today, uh, this is my first broadcast. We're going to do a little Q&A session, and it's called Ask the Chiropractor. You can ask me about anything. Ask me about chiropractic. Ask me about nutrition. Ask me about physical therapy. Ask me about medicine. Ask me about nutrition, pills, vaccination, anything. You name it. And boom, immediately, I had people logging in saying, well, tell me, you know, one person, uh, once you go to a chiropractor, you always have to go. And so I talked her through that fallacy. And another person was talking to me about their, their child in California and the vaccinations. And I had, by the end of my first show, I had 85 viewers, and I had just spent 30 minutes talking about chiropractic. So that was my foray into it, Chris. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's so awesome. And that's a, one of the things I noticed is because um, I've been following some people on Periscope, like Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, Tim Ferriss, and uh, one of the types of shows. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight, Dr. Carrie and I both, is just the types of things that you can do on Periscope to get engagement. Uh, one of the big things I've noticed is exactly what you did, Carrie, and that is uh, have a, an open Q and A session. Tim Ferriss, if you guys are familiar with him, he actually wrote the book, the you know the Four Hour Work Week, um, and then there's another book called The Four Hour Body, that sort of thing. Well, what Tim did is uh, he has this show that he does, I think, almost nightly, and it's called Wine Time with Tim, and uh, he just sits there like when you when you log on when he starts periscoping, anybody that you follow on periscope so if i'm following tim ferris and tim ferris decides that he wants to start broadcasting periscope lets all of your followers know and they actually it has like this little uh, this little whistle that it does it's like Hoo -hoo -hoo, or something <laughs> like that and uh <laughs> take care you know what i'm talking about right <laughs> I love it. So they'll let you know and then you get that little notification and then you look at your phone it says oh tim ferris is broadcasting so you simply click the button and then there you are live with Tim right then and there. And he does this thing called wine time with Tim. He'll sit there with a big ass glass of wine and he's just sitting there chilling and he's like, all right, you know, I'm going to answer some questions. And like people will ask him just about anything, you know, and everything from like, you know, what's your favorite sports team? You know, what, what's the name of the next book that you're writing? You know, where is your next speaking engagement? You know, what type of food did you have for dinner tonight? And he'll just sit there and engage with them. And, his um his fault his uh broadcasts are so popular that like if you don't get on them like right away like it'll block you from actually answering a question that's the only thing i don't really care about it is that you know tim will have six seven eight hundred people on his broadcast at one time and once it gets to a certain point i think if it's you know probably a couple hundred people or two three hundred people it'll allow you to view and watch but it won't allow you to ask a question it'll say this broadcast is too full 
So that just goes to show you what type of audience like you could actually build off it. And one of the things about it is that it's so new. Like um, Periscope is, from my understanding, Twitter just acquired it a couple of months ago, a couple months back. It's super new. It's still in its early adopter phase. And that is the ideal time to get on a platform is in the very beginning uh, especially one like this that is gaining momentum very quickly because you can gain a very, very, very large following just for the mere fact that you're an early adopter. The more you broadcast, the more followers you end up getting. If you're just going to sit back and watch, like you may pick up some followers and stuff like that along the way. But when you broadcast, people tune in and if they like what you hear, what they, what they hear they're going to start following you. So literally, if you started now and you started broadcasting even once a day, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a show, like Grant Cardone, you guys are familiar with him. He wrote the 10X rule, right? Well, Grant Cardone, he, that guy broadcasts probably like six or seven times a day. And like he does things like motivational moments, and then he'll do things like, um, you know, just him hanging out on a, a, at the airport, you know? Uh, it's just, you know, and he'll be sit there and answer a few questions. And sometimes he just broadcasts for a few minutes at a time. So it's not like you actually have to get in like, you know, broadcast for an hour or anything like that. You could literally spend like a few minutes um, broadcasting and start to grow your following. Now, one of the things I will tell you is that when you broadcast, people that are in your local area, and this is how you actually start to build your business, is that people that are on Periscope in your local area, one of the first places they look is in their local area to see who's broadcasting. So, for example, Dr. Tabor Smith, very, very dear friend of mine, like I was telling him about this Periscope. I'm like, dude, you you got to do this, right? So he was like, oh, I don't know, I'm kind of scared. You know, people are going to be live watching me and stuff. So Tabor and I talked about that because I felt the same way at first. I was a little nervous. I was just like, man, people are going to be live. Like, what am I going to say? You know, and uh, Tabor decided to do an office tour. I think it was yesterday. He sent out his first broadcast yesterday. He was in his chiropractic office and he just did an office tour. He just held his phone up and walked around his office and told people, you know, this is where people, uh, you know, these are, uh, this is the rehab area. This is where people get adjusted. This is our kids area. And people started tuning in and I screen captured it. Uh, there was, um, and I posted it on Facebook yesterday. Somebody from his local area said, wow, he goes, my back hurts all the time. Do you think I should come see you? And Tabor was like, yeah, totally. Like if your back hurts, why don't you come in and let's do an exam. And then people started asking after that, they were like, well, what causes back pain? And then Tabor was like, well, there's a lot of things that can cause back pain. I really wouldn't know what would be causing your problem unless we did an exam and a thorough consultation. But you know, here are some of the things that can cause it. It's related to chemical, physical, and emotional stress. And next thing I know, I'm watching Tabor like educate people about chiropractic. And like you can not only educate people on a local level, but you can educate people all over the world just like Dr. Dr. Carey was doing. So Dr. Carey, what were some of the other questions that people were asking you about chiropractic and health and stuff like that? I'm sorry, what was that, Chris? I lost you there. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, yeah, pay attention. <laughs> so uh, I said, what were some of the other questions that people were asking you about chiropractic when you were on your live broadcast? I actually have one lady who is who has a neurological dis, de, she had neurological uh, neurological deficit. And she was about ready to go in and and ha have some exploratory surgery on her brachial plexus, and she was just asking me, you know, she was in a bad car accident years ago. You know, they fused C5, C6, C7, uh, and she wanted to know if chiropractic could help. And I and I was like, well, you know, they didn't fuse the areas above it and below it, so. Of course you can. Are you still with me there, Chris? Yeah, I just got back. I got kicked off. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, I've had everything from cervical fusions, and then we had other you know people asking us uh, you know about my degree, about where you know how long do chiropractors have to go to school, and then I had some other people asking me what's the difference between chiropractic and physical therapy, and chiropractic and 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 and, and orthopedists, and even chiropractic, and you know people don't even know anything about you know what, what about chiropractic and veterinarian medicine. I was like, well, one's on animals and one's on humans, and 
and they even had people. <laughs> that's funny. Even had people talking. Uh, you know, how, how can chiropractic help their animals? So, it really is anything that you want to talk about. Um, I, I actually, after about two or three days of doing the, um, the, 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 just ask, ask the chiropractor. I, I started opening up to basically ask me anything. And today, I, I don't know if any of you know about my, my, my history or my past with, with alcohol. I actually started talking about the neurological effects of alcohol on the brain. And I had a young lady who is a, 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 a alcohol specialist in, in, in brain chemistry from, uh, from Holland log on and talk to me about people with uh, Korsakoff syndrome or, or wet brain. Um, and so it was literally talking about everything and anything. And then right from that, I had people in my own area asking me how, you know, can, what, what is the effect of chiropractic on the nervous system after somebody who has been drinking for long periods of time? And some of the stuff I couldn't even answer. And so tomorrow I'll have another show where I talk about the physiological effects of chiropractic and, and, and it's direct response when, you know, people are dealing with addiction. So it really has opened up the doors for so many different things for me to talk about. And people actually asking me, where's my practice? And, and you know, it's, it's just been amazing. So yeah. everything and anything. There we go. Now we're back. All right, can you guys hear now? There's a delay, so just we should us. be live broadcasting now on the webinar. Nicholas says starting in sixty seconds. Let's give it a second to, to catch up. Okay. Man, I am sorry about the technical difficulties tonight, folks. Sometimes it's just beyond your control. Normally this platform, I'm using Webinar Jam. It's a really great platform, but uh, it might be my my internet connection tonight. I absolutely love technology. That's why I'm a Cairo. <laughs> Good. So it's back. All right. Cool. Hey, Sheila. Dr. Drew, what's up? Everybody's back. JD, my man. So back to your question about can this be downloaded for a later time. So start that from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm sorry to repeat. For you fall guys following us on Periscope, I'm sorry to have to repeat this over again, but our webinar people didn't get to hear it because we weren't broadcasting. So one of the questions that was asked was, is, can you, can you uh, post a replay of your Periscope to Facebook or other social media. Yes, you can. So when you broadcast from Periscope, at the end of your broadcast, when you click stop broadcast, what happens is it will ask you, do you wanna save this to your camera roll? You simply click yes. There's also settings. So there's like a little gear in the upper right hand corner of your uh, Periscope app. And if you click that little gear there, the settings are there and you can go in and you can set it so that it automatically saves your broadcast to your camera roll. And then from there you can take that, that replay and you can post it to Facebook and you can say, Hey everybody, I just did a live Periscope. Here's the replay of it. If you missed it and then boom, you post it to Facebook, you can upload it to YouTube and so on and so forth. So you can really repurpose your content. Jill has a question. She says, "Can we get this get tonight's webinar and view it later?" Yes, there will be a re there will be a replay of this, but probably not the first half because we got kicked out. Um, well, there actually, let me. I might be able to edit the two together, possibly. Uh, you can listen to the broadcast at a later time. Yes, we'll, uh, thing, we'll we'll get a replay. One thing that we came up with today, because when I was doing my my webinar today, I had over. I mean, my um, Periscope today, I had over two hundred people come on to my, my, my session today and at the end of it, it tells you the retention that you keep, the number of people that follow you and today I have a 20% retention. So of the 200 people that are following, you know, I had 40 people that, that favorited it and liked it. So that, that was an excellent thing. But what Chris and I figured out is when you're doing your, the name of your Periscope to actually put the name of the town that you're in. So explain that, Chris. Yeah, so this was kind of an interesting thing. Um, there's actually two things that uh, 
that go along with this. Uh, one of the things is, and I don't know if you, if I'm going to repeat this because I don't know if uh, if you guys missed it because we dropped the broadcast, whatever. But um, when you're periscoping to get a local audience, what happens is a lot of people in your local area that are periscoping, they will search for other people periscoping in your community. So that's like one of the first places that they look. So if you're going to do like an ask Dr. Carey or ask the chiropractor show, let's say, right? And you're going to do like a 15 minute segment every morning at seven o'clock. Let's say you just wanted to do it like that. You can, there's multiple ways to use this platform, but let's say you were going to do a daily show or a weekly show, right? And you, one of the things you could do is like ask the chiropractor and then you could have like the name of your town, McKinney, Texas. So when people get, because uh, everybody that follows you gets notified by Periscope as soon as you start broadcasting. So when that little hoo -hoo 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 thingy or that little whistle that goes off and it lets you know, hey, somebody's Periscoping, you can open up the app and you can see, okay, ask the chiropractor in McKinney, Texas, and people be like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, McKinney, Texas. So you can use it that way. Another thing I found out last night, which um, I was uh, – was it last night? No, Sunday night. Sunday night, I think it was. I was watching uh, uh, World Cup soccer, right? The uh, uh, Americans versus the Germans. So, like, I was periscoping. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to broadcast. I'm going to periscope while I'm watching this game, right? So, like, I click it on, and I'm sitting there, and some lady comes on, and she's like, hey. She goes, I'm so glad that you're periscoping this game. I wanted to see it, and I can't get it. She lived in Mexico, right? And I was like, oh, cool. I said, well, she goes, I've been looking for somebody who was broadcasting it, and I found you. And I found that very interesting. So I was like, well, how did you find me? And she's like, well, I went to Twitter, and I went to the Twitter search, and I typed in World Cup, so World, World Cup Soccer Periscope, and you were the first search result that came up. And I was like, whoa. I'm like, that is cool. You mean people can actually search for things? like that on Twitter and they could possibly find you. So I thought that was really cool as well. So like you, what I named the, I named the title of my Periscope World Cup Soccer, watching World Cup Soccer from Periscope or something like that. So those key words came up in the search when she typed it on Twitter, which I thought was really cool. Um, so there's a couple things you can do. You could do an open Q&A with people um, just get on and start broadcasting say hey this is ask the chiropractor you know I'm Dr. Chris Burfield and uh, ask me any question you want about health and wellness I'm going to be available for the next 20 minutes so if you've got some questions just ask me and you can start broadcasting that you could take people on a tour of your chiropractic office just like Dr. Tabor Smith did so you could do that you could broadcast your next dinner workshop or your next in office workshop like I'm broadcasting on Periscope right now. We're probably a good 30 minutes in, right, at, at this point. And uh, so if you have a dinner workshop that's 30 minutes to 45 minutes long or something like that or an in-office workshop, you could broadcast that and not only educate people in your community, but you can educate people around the world about chiropractic. How amazing is that? And you have an audience, a captivated audience. They get on if they like what they hear they stay on, they end up following you, and then every time and any time you do a broadcast, bam, they get notified, hey, Dr. Kerry Sigafoos is doing a broadcast right now, and then they just tune in. And you can build a really, really loyal tribe and a very fanatical following if you do this the right way, and you do it regularly. You know, if you're gonna broadcast once a month, okay, great, you know what I mean, that's fine. But like, if you could get in the habit of just even like broadcasting once a day, you're gonna find people in your local area are going to find you because as as uh, uh, Periscope continues to grow and get bigger and bigger and bigger, more and more people in your local area are gonna be signed up with Periscope. And when they go to look, and a lot of people are their viewers, a lot of them are not broadcasting. And that's where you can differentiate yourself from everybody else because you're the one broadcasting. You're the one with a message. So people in your local area tune in to you 
and they get to ask you questions and you can build relationships with them and then you get a, a following of people that every time you broadcast they're on and after a while you'll get the you know you'll recognize those names you know hey sideshow Bob or whatever their <laughs> whatever their their handle is like good to see you again you know because Carrie's got some guys that actually people that follow him there's a guy in London that follows Carrie and he gets on almost every broadcast would you tell them about that Carrie yeah He's actually a very funny guy. He actually came on because he's a carpet cleaner and he has a lot of, you know, he, he has a lot of, of low back pain. And I was going into my whole thing about talking about what a subluxation is, and, and that chiropractor's my primary job is to find and correct subluxations. And he's like, well, do these, what are these, do these subluxations cause pain? I was like, that's one of the symptoms of it. And I was trying to steer away from the whole pain model of chiropractic and. And the guy was hilarious. He's like, well, I'll do anything. He's like, you know, I, the only time it doesn't hurt is when I'm actually doing my job. He's like that and, and servicing lonely ladies. So he was really, really funny. And, I, and at one point, I actually fell off my treadmill because I was laughing so hard. And I literally popped right back up. And I'm like, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm okay. And that one little thing, you know, just cracked him up. And now he's back on every day. And he's actually going to see a chiropractor in greater London. And it, you know, it's you know, one person that had no concept is now one of my biggest followers. And then, and, and today we even found out that he, he when we were doing on on chiropractic and addiction, you know, he's he's a recovering alcoholic. And so it's it's just amazing the people that I've been able to touch in just a week and a half short period of time. And it's not wow. necessarily me. I, I got some chiropractor in London who I don't even know a person that came walking in because I was on here periscoping. And you know, I, and I've added several people that I've, I've referred already up to my brother in Edgewood because that's where his practice is. So it's you know, I'm not really focusing on me yet. I'm focusing on the people around me. Carrie, that is so important what you just said. Oh my God! So did you guys like? Okay, I want you guys to think about this, and I want you to just kind of get outside of yourselves for a second and think about the the big picture here with this thing. Is what Carrie just said. You're going to have people tuning in from all over the fucking world. Excuse my French, right? You're going to have people tuning in from everywhere. If someone decides, hey, you know what? I like what you're saying. This makes sense to me. You could refer them to a chiropractor in another town, in another city, in another country. And then together, now imagine if we had 15, 20, 25,000 chiropractors periscoping every freaking day and people are tuning in and they're learning about the chiropractic story and the chiropractic message. And then they say, hey, you know what? I have a friend that practices in Florida. Oh, you know what? You live in Michigan. You know what? I don't personally know a chiropractor there, but my network of chiropractic is huge. I have, uh, I can get on Facebook and I can find a chiropractor for you in Michigan. And what we do is we start changing the world together. And we got chiropractors referring patients to each other all over the world. That's what this is all about. We've got to get outside of ourselves and start thinking about the bigger picture of chiropractic and what it can do. Carrie, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm just like excited about it. But like, you know, the thing is, guys, if we work together and we do this and we can like just get on here and do Q&As with people every single day for 15 minutes a day, we could take chiropractic to the tipping point. We could get chiropractic to a point where instead of seeing 7% of the population, we're seeing 10, 15, 20% of the population. So I'm sorry, Carrie, you had something to say. No, I said, and the amazing thing about this is it's all free. I mean, you don't pay for your Twitter account if you have Twitter. You don't pay for the Periscope because it's free. This is literally 110% free advertising, not just for you, but for the people around you. And it's actually making me a better speaker because I'm thinking, getting asked questions off the cuff. It's, it's great practice. You know, I, I'm going to use our, our, our awesome friend, uh, uh, Isaac. You know, he, he's he's... He's getting in there, he's telling the story, and, and he wants to practice. This is one of the best ways you can get there and literally tell the chiropractic story and practice it and get it out there. You know, set up your periscope so it views you when you do your doctor's talk in your office. You know, it's it's amazing free technology. I mean, think about this. You you have free air 
air, airplay around the globe at any time you want it. So, you know, I, yeah, free. Why would you not use it? Why? It's free. Yeah. I talked <laughs> you know to I mean? people today for free. <laughs> 200 people. Gary had 200 people tuned in today on Ask the Chiropractor. 200 yeah. people. And he's been doing this for 10 days. Yeah. Imagine it's where wrong. he's going to be a year from now. Yeah. This is exciting, guys. This is really, really exciting. Like, I hope you guys are getting how powerful this media is. Like, now, all of your you, patients. Should they sign up with, 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 if they don't have a Twitter account, how important is for them to get that Twitter account? Jordan, real quick, Jordan says that takes big cojones to open it up and uh, to any health questions. <laughs> yeah, hey. you're right. You know what? But Jordan, I hear that you've got the biggest cojones out there. <laughs> so like, uh, so I know you'll do real well. So, but for real, it's like, yeah, you know, it's taking that first step. And uh, to carry it is. It's like if it, it's important to sign up with Twitter. You can sign up just using your phone or your email or something like that. But sign, get a Twitter account. It's free too. Get a Twitter account, sign up with Twitter because people can find your broadcast on Twitter. Yeah. And that's what's really, and that's another really cool thing about, about this. So, I you know, mean, so many hearts at one point, Periscope actually favored it and, 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 and did a, did the SIG Talks broadcast as one of their favorite Periscopes. So they're working for you. Prefer yeah, so what Carrie means by the hearts is that when you're on Periscope, if you like what somebody's saying, so you guys that are out there listening right now, if you like what you're what you're hearing here on Periscope, if you just start tapping your screen right now, hearts will start flooding the screen. And that's that's just like a like a Facebook like or an Instagram like. So when you start tapping the screen, hearts start flooding in. So what Carrie's saying is that it's at one point during one of his broadcasts. He had so many hearts, so many people liking his show that he, the broadcast that he was doing, that people started. Uh, that uh, I'm sorry, Periscope said, "Wow, this is a really popular broadcast right now. Let's favorite it and put it in our favorites." So they've kind of like uh, there's a section on the on the app where you can see like some of the favorite broadcasts, and you can go there and t and carry uh, broadcast was one of them. So really cool stuff. So what I would do is I would actually get your patients and let them know that you're on Periscope. Say, hey, Mary Jane, are you on Periscope? No, what's that? Because most like I'm telling you guys, like it's so new. Like the 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 kids at Starbucks, I go to Starbucks every day and I get a, a cup of Joe. And they're like, you know, 19, 20, 21 years old. And I was like, hey, are you guys on Periscope? And they're like, you know, I heard about that, but I not wasn't sure what it was. I'm like, oh dude, That's it's awesome. Question. You can live broadcast. And uh but the point is, is that tell your patients about it, and the next time you do an in-office workshop, tell them, hey, we're going to be broadcasting this live on Periscope. I'd like you to tune in tonight. So there's some questions there. Uh, it says, when doing a show, how do people relate the questions to you? Is it printed on your phone or screen? It's so actually, I'm going to show you a replay of my Periscope from this morning, just real quick, just so you can see. If you look down there at the bottom of the screen, you can see people's names popping up. That's also where the, the, the questions pop up. So you just read the question out loud. They can hear you. Cause you can see. So that's the thing I was talking about on the treadmill. So you can see what we're doing. But I'm bobbing my head up and down, and I'm talking the whole entire time. But the questions come in. So I hope that answers that. And the next question up there, Chris, was are Twitter accounts named better for your business name, or should you use your personal name? I, I, I would you know, say do your business name. What about you, Chris? Yeah, you know, um, yeah, I mean, mine is my personal name, uh, you know, Chris W. Burfield. But, like, go ahead and use your, use, your, use your chiropractic office. You know what I mean? There's, I don't see any, any issue with that. Um, Sheila's asking again how Especially since that's what you're trying to brand. You know what I mean? Yeah, Sheila, um, just so you, you have that question, how do people know when you're broadcasting? Because they, if they like your show... Uh, Periscope sends you a message on your phone. Yeah, so Sheila, what happens is, is if they follow you, so if you're, if you're, um, let's say, uh, for example, let's say you tell your patients about it. You're like, hey, I'm on Periscope. Why don't you go follow me on Periscope? And let's say you get like five or six patients to go and follow you on Periscope. 
and you tell them I'm at Chris W. Burfield. So they go to Periscope and they type in Chris W. Burfield. And then I'll, now they're following you. Let's say the next morning you decide that you're going to do a live Periscope as you're making your morning green smoothie, right? Because my mom just did a broadcast on this this afternoon. She was making like some sort of, uh, 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 she was making a dish in a crock pot and she started broadcasting it and I got notified and I got the little whistle and when I looked at it, it said, Grammy is her Grammy 2007. That's her, that's her uh, Periscope name. Grammy 2007 is broadcasting right now and I clicked on it and opened it up and there's my mom in her kitchen making food in the crock pot telling everybody about this delicious dish that she's going to make. So if when you get people to follow you, when you broadcast, Periscope will notify them when you're broadcasting. So if you end up with, imagine all the people that are on your Facebook page, right? So we all know that like with our Facebook business pages that if you've got like, let's say a hundred people that have liked your page and you make a post, you're going to get like maybe 7% of those people to actually see your post because Facebook wants you to pay to play. They want you to pay to boost the post to show it to the rest of your, of your audience. It doesn't work like that on Periscope. If you've got a hundred followers on Periscope and you start broadcasting, Periscope notifies all 100 people that you're broadcasting live right now. Just and like that, guys. They get the, up, there it is on my phone. That's the little yeah. message from Periscope that somebody I'm following is Periscoping right now, and they're asking me to join in. Yeah, so what you're seeing there with Dr. Carey, yep, so if he clicks it, click that link real quick, Carey. Right. And it's taking me straight to it. There she is. She, uh, she, and it should start I playing in a second. Awesome. She talks about marketing and periscoping as well. So There she is. Yeah, so that chick's live right now, right? So yeah. Carrie just got notified that she's broadcasting. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Like I highly encourage you. And the way, here's what I would do. Here's the way you get over your fear of doing your first broadcast. One of the things I would do tomorrow is when you show up, Open up your Periscope app, click the broadcast button, and take people on a tour of your office. Perfect. And you can hold the camera up. Show them your face, right? So you'll hold the, hold the camera like this, or you can hold it sideways if you want to for a, full, for a full screen effect, or you can hold it up and down. But hold it, and just like you do with a selfie, walk around your office and be like, okay, so this over here, this is my kids section. We see lots of kids in here, everything. You know, we have parents that bring kids in because they have ear infections, you know, kids that have uh, colic. We have kids that come in here because their parents understand chiropractic and how important it is for their spine and nervous systems to be well. So this is our kids area. Over here, this is our front desk. Let me introduce you to our front desk girl. Hey, Sarah, say hi to everybody on Periscope. So, and all you'll do is just take people on an office tour. That's one of the best ways because you're kind of distracted. You're not necessarily like, oh my God, I got to answer questions. Yeah. Oh my God. You know what I mean? So like, um, and I'm sorry. There we go. You're going to hold your camera out. I didn't have the, uh, the camera on the, on uh, the webinar, but you're going to hold that camera out and you're just going to walk around your office and do your, and do your Periscope. Um, that's, uh, that's one of the first things I would do. Like one of the very first Periscopes I did guys, I was in a sushi restaurant. So when you go to my profile on Periscope, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see one of the first broadcasts I did and I was inside a sushi restaurant. And when I was in that sushi restaurant, I was kind of nervous about doing the first scope, right? I was like, oh man, I'm kind of nervous. There's going to be live people. So like I ended up, um, I was just like, you know what? I'll just show them what I'm having for dinner. So I got on there. I was like, hey, I'm at Zen Sushi and off of Custer Road in McKinney, Texas. They got the best sushi, da, 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 da. and that's when I realized I was like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm plugging this place right now, and I'm letting people know around the community and around the world how amazing Zen Sushi is. And that's when I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like this is going to be absolutely huge for chiropractic. Absolutely huge. So do an office tour tomorrow. That's what I want your first Periscope to be. I'm going to follow you. So if you go to Chris W. Burfield on Periscope and follow me, I'm going to follow you back. And I'm going to wait to get that notification 
from Periscope that you're broadcasting your office tour tomorrow because I want to see it. So um, let's see what Sheila have to say. She says, uh, so once you join in, you'll get notices. Yes, that's true. Uh, then how do you get more followers who wouldn't know about you otherwise that you broadcast something of interest and they get notified? Yeah, so here's what happens, Sheila. People are on Periscope and they're looking to just tune in and find something of interest. You'll have people in your local community, like I'll have people in McKinney, Texas, Plano, Texas, Denton, Texas, Allen, Texas, Dallas, Texas. There will be people around the area, one of, and one of the first places they'll go to find people broadcasting will be their local area. When I was broadcasting World Cup soccer yesterday, I had like 39 people tuned in, and like seven or eight of them were from just around this general area which I thought was really cool. So they were locals. And some, some of them were like, oh, you're in McKinney? Well, you're like my next door neighbor practically. I'm in Denton. So like, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Where at, you know, you know, blah, 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 blah. You guys got some flooding up there recently. And we like, you know, we had a conversation. So people from your local area will find you. That's why it's so important to get on Periscope now because it's in the early adopter phase which means that there's not a lot of people. There are millions Paris, or using Periscope or at least viewing people on Periscope right now, but it's not like an Instagram where it's got 300 million users already, right? It's not like a Facebook where it's got 1.2 billion users, but it does have millions of users and it's growing in popularity. More and more people are becoming aware of it. Look, you guys are on this thing right now because me and Carrie were shouting from the rooftops on Facebook and we sent you an email saying, hey, look, you got to you gotta check this out. There are other people out there doing the exact same thing. So when you're in the early adopter phase, people, as more and more people around your community start getting on Periscope, they're going to find you and they're going to start following you. So that's how, that's how you do it. And then you'll have people from Czechoslovakia, people from Turkey, people from Hungary tuning in and following you from all over the world just because they happen to click on one of those little red buttons, one of those little red dots on the map and they tuned in and they found you at that moment in time. If you want to know how local it gets, as I was broadcasting today, someone else was on Periscope at Planet Fitness who was going to do a Periscope of, of them lifting weights, logged on to my Periscope and I was on the treadmill and they were over at the dead weight lifting weights. So we were in the same building and he was watching me on Periscope. He came over and said hi to me in person afterwards at the gym. So that's how local it can get. Yeah, right? <laughs> he was actually watching me from the gym that I was in. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. He was that's awesome. But himself. Kennedy has a question. Oh, Kennedy, wants to know. Sure. Kennedy wants to know, uh, from what it sounds like, you can have personal messages through Periscope or is it public? It's both. So like I could actually have all my followers, let's say like I had a hundred followers and I wanted like 10 of them to actually see my Periscope. I can personally invite those people. I haven't done that yet, but I saw on the app where you could personally invite people to just tune in and kind of keep it more intimate. Yeah. Or you can broadcast it publicly. Or you can also only allow people to ask questions who favorite your page. Oh, okay, cool. You know, and then on you and you can block people too. So if you get some yeah. jerk off on there that starts like, Carrie had one of those. He had a heckler on there that was saying some stuff, and uh, you just block them. You just click on their profile, click block, a block, boom, that's done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. Do you guys have any other questions about Periscope that? Uh, uh, that might help you start using this this platform. What you know, everyone I want to take away from this tonight is one, it's free. Two, you're not gonna break it. <laughs> Three, you're not gonna break your phone. You're not gonna get charged for it. There's nothing. Just get on there and try it. I mean, if Chris can do it from a sushi restaurant, and if I can do it from a treadmill, and you know, there's no reason that you know we all can't do it. And I'm starting to see more and more chiropractors on it on a daily basis. That's all I got. Yeah, and uh, my 63-year-old dad is periscoping. And he actually has broadcast more than I have. 
Like I introduced it to him like three days ago. And like, he's like a periscoping machine. I mean, that cat, like every five minutes I turn around, he's like doing a broadcast. Cause my dad, my dad's a Methodist minister. And I told him, I was like, dad, you could use this for your church. Like you could broadcast from your church live and your message could go all over the globe. And then his next question was, can I use it for my business? <laughs> and my dad, he's getting ready to retire, right? So he's 63, he's got a couple years, he's gonna retire from the ministry. And he has started an online business. They sell uh, floor coverings. They sell mats and rugs and stuff like that from their online store. And I was like, yeah, totally you could use that to, for your business. Ian so, has a question for you. What's that again, Carrie? Ian has a question for you. Yes, uh, sorry I'm late. Can I find my current friends list of people on there? That is a good question. Uh, Carrie, did you notice that when you signed up? Did you notice you that you your, could actually? You can find your friends on, on, um, on Twitter on there. The people that follow you on Twitter, you can find them on there and then invite them over. But I don't know if the Facebook does work that way with Twitter. I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't, but I, I haven't seen that, that yet. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, that, I'll definitely check into that. Check into that yourself. Just go sign up with Periscope and see if it offers you an opportunity to follow your friends that are already on Twitter or Periscope or that you know. Um, yeah, that would be cool. That would be real cool if it if it does. Um, but uh, yeah, with but my my dad, you know, I mean, if he can do it, yeah. Oh, you know what? That was one of the coolest things, guys. Like, you know, maybe I'll see if he can get me the replay of it or if there's some way um, I can have him send me the video. But my dad, so like I'm sitting at the house and I get the notification that somebody's broadcasting that little -hoo -hoo -hoo, whatever. So like I open it up and it's my dad. I'm like, OK, cool. I'll tune in and see what the old man's up to. So I tuned into it and it ended up my dad is at his chiropractor's office, laying down on the adjustment adjusting table and telling everybody, hey, I'm at the chiropractor's office right now. And he starts going in about how he had this violent adverse drug reaction last year and it left him, it left him paralyzed. He spent three weeks in the hospital and it was because of like, you know, he had, a, his doctor had given him a, a medication for arthritis that he didn't even really have arthritis. He was just having a little bit of cramping and pain in his fingers. Um, nothing major and it was like here take this drug so my dad took it and he became paralyzed from like his whole left whole left side of his body so they ended up they took him to the hospital long story short I won't get into it um, they ended up doing surgery on him they cut his neck open they put steel rods they fused his spinal bones and all that shit like absolutely ridiculous but my dad is in the cut and it's, it's taking him he's still he's about 90% He's regained he, uh, some function. He can walk. He can move around. He actually rode his bike for a little bit not too long ago. So he's getting back to his old self. But for a while there, like we thought he was going to be just, we thought he was going to be paralyzed. We thought he had a stroke. We weren't sure what Ian, had happened. Two questions for you there, Chris. Okay, cool. So I'll finish up my story real quick. So it ends up, um, my dad's laying on the chiropractic table telling people about this while he's waiting to get his adjustment and starts telling people, you know, if I had, cause my dad was getting adjusted and then had quit and he hadn't really gotten adjusted for, for like two or three years. And he's telling people if I hadn't stopped getting adjusted, I would have never had to have taken that medication and I wouldn't have ended up in the situation that I was in. So I was like, Oh my God, I'm like, this is like amazing. So imagine if your patients come into your office and they have a testimonial and you ask them, Hey, would you mind if we just did a quick periscope? Like, I mean, you're going to record their video testimonial anyway and put it on your website. So why not do a, a periscope and broadcast it to the world? And you've got your replay that you can then post to your website afterwards. So what was Ian's question? He says, what about your name versus username, et cetera? Recommend using practice name or former name. Um, you can use either or. Um, I mean, I mine's Chris W. Burfield, but if you have a chiropractic office, um, you could, uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use your practice name. Um, I mean, I've seen people with some crazy names, you know what I mean? So like, uh, 
like Sideshow Bob, 1842, you know, that sort of thing. So why not use your chiropractic office name? Um, yeah, Kennedy, I was just thinking that. I'm assuming you're talking about the patients and stuff like that, testimonials. Uh, I think the only issue would be making sure they sign a consent form. Yes, that's true, Kennedy. Make sure they sign a consent form, but that's the same thing you do whenever you get a, um, uh, a video testimonial from them. You always get the consent form. So you just do the same thing. Hey, I'm gonna have you sign this consent form, and we're gonna do a live broadcast, and we're gonna record your testimonial at the same time. Plus, the other thing you could do, now I'm not, uh, I don't know all the HIPAA rules and stuff like that. I'm not an attorney, so don't take this as, you know, take this with a grain of salt, but this is just an idea. One of the things you could do is you could let patients know, hey, look, we're on Periscope and we're going to live broadcast from our office every day from 10 a.m. to 1030. Um, so if you want, if you're going to come in and get adjusted at that time, we're going to be live broadcasting. And if you're cool with that, I'll just have you sign this consent form. If you're not cool with that, no worries. We can always reschedule you at like 1031 or something like that, right? So, and then you can schedule them at a time. But if you have patients that are cool with being on your show and you make it sound like it's like a TV show sort of thing, because it really, it kind of is, it's your, it's your own TV show, um, you could have them sign a consent form and you could live broadcast right from your office and you could talk to people and say, hey, you know, we're at XYZ Chiropractic today and, you know, we've got a ton of patients here we're taking care of, so we're gonna get to work and, you know, um, if you guys have questions, you know, you can ask them along the way. And then one of your staff members could sit there and monitor it and ask, you know, answer questions along the way. So I don't know. Those are just, those are just some ideas to use it. I'm not saying that's how you have to use it, but those are some ideas. Um, Ian says, I would think you would want uh, YouTube for testimonials. That way they're more permanent. Yeah. Well, Ian, what you would do is you would actually take this and you would, you could upload this to your YouTube channel, the replay of this video of your broadcast and take that broadcast and upload it to Facebook video. So you can repurpose the content. Of course you would do regular testimonials and put those on YouTube and on Facebook as well, but why not get your content from your broadcast and repurpose it and put it on YouTube and Facebook as well. Remember the whole idea, the whole, the biggest barrier to businesses growing is obscurity. People not knowing who you are. So the more content you can put out and the more you can be absolutely everywhere, you're on Instagram, you're on Facebook, you're on Periscope, you're on Twitter, you're email marketing, you're writing a blog, you're doing Facebook video. The more of that stuff that you can do, the less obscure you become and the more well known you become, the more people in your community know how to find you, get a hold of you and actually come to you versus some other healthcare professional in town. Ian says, uh, just wonder how people find you, et cetera. Uh, yeah, so uh, we were talking about this earlier. I know you joined in late, Ian, but like there are gonna be people that join Periscope, that sign up with Periscope in your local area. Most people are viewers. Most people are not live broadcasting. The first thing that the viewer does when they get on Periscope, I did this, Carrie did this, Dr. Tabor Smith did this, like everybody I know that has gotten on Periscope, one of the first things they do is they look to see Who's in my who, who's periscoping in my local area? So I found some young, like 21, 22 year old kids broadcasting in a bar here in McKinney, Texas. That was like one of the first ones that I watched. And I was like, that's cool. Like these people are in McKinney right now. And I'm sitting there trying to figure out what bar they were at, right? So I was like, you know, where are they right now? So like I could have easily, I could have probably asked them, but I was just sitting back and viewing and watching because I, you know, he's getting used to the platform. But that's how people find you. So as Periscope grows and more and more people tune in and get a Periscope account, if you're one of the only people in your area of broadcasting, they're going to come find you. And if your content is something that they find valuable or entertaining, they're going to follow you. And when they follow you, every single time you do a broadcast, they get notified. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Dr. Ian's broadcasting right now. Ask the chiropractor or whatever, whatever you decide to title your, your, your broadcast. Um, all those social things, what site do you recommend to manage bust out to all of them instead of logging into all of them? Um, you know, I use Hootsuite. That's uh, it doesn't actually cover all of them. It doesn't cover your Instagram account or anything like that. 
but uh, but I use Hootsuite. Dr. Carey uses Hootsuite. So um, you can post to LinkedIn, you can post to uh, Facebook, Twitter, and you can sign. There's other social media platforms. And when you make a post, it'll put it out to all of those. Um, do your videos list out like a Facebook timeline or do they expire after some amount of time? As far as I know right now, they don't expire. Uh, I've only been using it for about 10 days. And if you go to my profile, which is Chris W. Burfield on Periscope, you can see all my previous broadcasts. Dr. Carrier, are you finding the same thing? Uh, yeah. I, but again, it's only been 10 days, so I don't know how, how long they're going to. It's an awful lot of, a lot of data that they're going to be storing. But I, so far, I, I, they're all still there. So yeah. To the Sig Talk. My, my, it's funny because you, you're using personally, I use Sig Talks, which is actually my, my podcast show, but it's also my Periscope show. So I, it's, I, it's still there. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I do at the end of every broadcast on Periscope is I tell people where I'm at on social media. So I'll say, hey, you know, first of all, if you're watching this, thanks for tuning in. You know, I'm going to head out now. But I encourage you to follow me. So always like, you know, do that call to action. Follow me on Periscope. You can follow me on Twitter at Chris W. Burfield. And please follow me on Instagram at Chris W. Burfield. So my Twitter, my Periscope, and my Instagram are all the same name to make it pretty easy for people. Um, and then, of course, you could say, you know, and you can follow me on Facebook at, you know, or Facebook forward slash chiropractic underground, and people can go there. So what do you, uh, let me uh, flip the camera here. Whoops, Gary. Let me see. Let me get back to That's you. That's the list of every broadcast that I've done so far. So they're all, they're all still there. Yeah. So it's just a list underneath your profile picture. Yeah. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. So let me ask you guys this. How many of you are going to broadcast tomorrow? How many of you are going to broadcast your office tour? Like, tell me in the chat. I want you to type, I am. I am, I am. Because <laughs> I want to watch it. I want to see your office tour. I want to see you get on Periscope, and I want to see you take advantage of this platform because it's going to be absolutely huge. Dead space. Dead space. Wow. Are you tight? Maybe We're, we might be on a little bit of a delay, so we'll see. I see that there's still people out there. Like, how many of you are going to broadcast an office tour tomorrow? Nobody? Nobody. Well, I'm in. There we go. Ian. Yes, I'm in. All right, Ian. Yeah, I'm expecting well, it, Brian. If anyone's sure. nervous and, 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 and afraid of doing it, I actually broadcast every day uh, between 6 and 7.30, and it's, it's my show is called it's Sig Talks uh, underneath Carrie and Sigafoos. And you can just, you know, take a look at one of ours. Take a look at Chris's. Take a look at mine. And if you're nervous, you, you'll see that there's no reason to be nervous. So, Yeah. Yeah, no reason. And that's one of the reasons I recommend that like you do something like an office tour because it, it's kind of a, a, of a bit of a distraction in a way. It's not completely focused on you. So if you're kind of uncomfortable the first time, it's pretty simple for you to just be like, hey, let me show you around our office. Tony, boom, broadcast. Jordan, not quite sure tomorrow. But should by end of the week, office is kind of torn up due to remodel. Hey, you know what, though, Jordan? Remodel. Like, tell people that. Show them the remodel. Give What's that, Carrie? I said, show us how the <clears throat> give a tour of the remodel and what you're doing. That's that's exciting. People love that. My mom's out there watching HGTV right now on somebody getting their house ripped apart. I'd rather watch a friend's or a <clears throat> my doctor's office being ripped apart. Yeah, Excuse I me. would. I would totally broadcast my office remodel. That's exciting. I mean, you get in there and say, "Hey guys, I just, I'm going to show you around the office. We're going through a remodel right now because we've been helping so many people, and we've torn down some walls, and we're putting this in over here and this over here. Like people are just, they just, so many people in town, like they just love us so much that we've had to. You know, we're growing so rapidly. We had to do this remodel. 
So like, and I would just, I would just tell people that and uh, don't be ashamed. Just be transparent. You know what I mean? Thanks for sure joining Ian. Thanks. Take care. JD, Friday. Oh, you're, yeah, you're welcome. To I'm me. looking forward to it. Well, I don't have anything else to add to it right now, Chris. Do you? Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm done for now. I think we're both done. So uh, I'm going to encourage you guys right now to go follow Sig Talks. Follow Dr. Carey. He pretty much does a broadcast every morning. What time does your broadcast start in the morning, Carrie? Sometime between 6 and 7.30. all depends on what time I get in, on the treadmill. So between 6 and 7.30, if you follow him, you'll get notified when he starts broadcasting tomorrow. So you can at least watch one of his shows and see how he interacts with people. It's a lot of fun. Like once you get I in I laugh a lot. I laugh a lot. I stumble a lot. It's totally, it's, it's hilarious. I could actually also, I get a lot, I get hit on a lot too, which is really funny. <laughs> people like my fuzzy beard. I had, I had, I think I went about 10, 15 minutes talking about my beard the other day. That's funny. That's awesome. Uh, you know, people get to see, so, the but, and then I would also encourage you. People get to see the human side of you and that's really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off on my so, you kind of broke up a little bit, Carrie. What'd you say? Oh, I said the people get to see the human side of you. So and that, that's, that's really nice. Yeah. And that's, I'll kind of end with that. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's all about transparency, guys. It's all about being absolutely transparent with people and letting them see you for who you really are. That's, and that's what gets people to know, like, and trust you. So I'm going to encourage you to follow me on Periscope at Chris W. Burfield. Follow me on Instagram at Chris W. Burfield. And you can follow me on Twitter. At and for Chris. those who are left, Ian, Colin, Bob, Anthony, Chris, Dr. T, Joshua, Drew, Gerald, JD, Dan, Sheila, Kennedy, Jamie, and Jordan, thank you. Tony and Nicholas, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, we'll catch you on the flip side. See you on Periscope. Yeah.